there are two types of challenges, completing something as fast as possible or doing it with some limitations. I prefer the latter because it allows me to immerse myself in the exploration of my character or the environment rather than just rushing through the most optimal paths with the most optimal builds. So I attempted to solo every Guild Wars 2 dungeon that it was possible to solo, but I let my viewers vote which class and specialization I play for each one, meaning I couldn't optimize for the task ahead and I would need to perform on a wide variety of specs. Oh, and also, if I died, I would add 20 gold to the pot and give it away to my viewers at the end of the dungeon. So, what the viewers could do is choose the worst class specializations and get easy money, right? While that already happened, you can still participate in the giveaway occurring on this video. I will be giving away 5 community chests, but there will be more details on that later. I started out with the Ascalonian Catacombs Explorable Path 3, and you all chose the Chronomancer specialization. So naturally, I played a Berserker Phantasm Chrono. By the way, if you want to see all the builds I used in this video, you can check out the open world builds list on guildgen.com, linked in the description. At first, I struggled with the Spider Queen and lost a bunch of gold, but the real hurdle was the Graveling Burrow event. Essentially, you need to protect two retrievers, but Gravelings are constantly spawning and you need to take out the burrows to stop Gravelings from spawning, but you also need to kill any Gravelings that spawn before they get loose and spread out because you need to keep managing the burrows to prevent more from spawning. Luckily, I was given Chronomancer, which has some of the best burst, and while the event had some close calls, I eventually put all my eggs in the damage basket, and that made things a lot easier. Then I made my way to the final boss, which was a problem, because when the ceiling starts falling, the entire room becomes a danger zone. Here's another issue, my build revolves around blocks, and the ceiling falling is unblockable, so positioning is extremely important. After a few deaths and a few close calls, I managed to beat the Graveling boss and ended up with a total loss of 80 gold. Then I went to Codicus Manor Path 1, and you all chose Spellbreaker. Now Spellbreaker is a great solo class, but Codicus Manor has some rough sections with snipers who deal more damage to you while moving, and as a melee class, this was unnerving. After clearing out all the Asuran technology in the basement, I got to the barn where an entire firing squad is lined up on the second floor, which is scary, but I somehow managed to get through it deathless due to rallying off of the lesser foes and managing evade frames. Before getting to the final boss, I had to run through a legion of bandits who robbed me of another 20 gold, but I made it through to the final boss, Frost, who just permanently chills you with a frontal cone, so dodging behind them did the trick mostly until the golems came alive and complicated things a bit. Also, he shoots a ball of ice that will petrify you. Unlike most other CCs in the game, you cannot stun break a petrify, so getting hit by this is the same as tanking a few seconds of the chilling spray. But I managed to survive and thrive, only losing 40 gold. Next, I went to Twilight Arbor, and you all chose Weaver. That's free gold, right? Ellie is the downstate class. Well, no. Celestial Weaver is one of the most powerful solo builds, and I destroyed the up path of this dungeon. One of the challenging parts is Malrona, who has two attacks, a frontal cone poison, which isn't an issue, and then a massive one-shot AoE. The boss alternates between these two attacks, so as long as you keep track of which one is next, you either get behind or dodge. Pretty free dungeon solo for Weaver, at least until the final boss, the Nightmare Tree, which has a one-shot attack that killed me twice until I learned the animation to dodge. In total, I lost 40 gold from Twilight Arbor, just from that last boss. Sorrow's Embrace Path 2 is next on the list of dungeons to clear, and Deadeye was chosen. And at this point, I'm convinced you all didn't want to rinse me of my gold, you just want to see dungeons cleared to see as much content as possible. I respect that. So we went in with one of the best open world specs, but still I got taxed 40 gold by these communistic mole men. There's an event where you need to take out an armored car, 
but there are tons of elite dredge with range damage that keep respawning. So rather than fighting the dredge, you need to kite them while taking out the armored car. While you can easily die to all the pressure, it isn't that hard to do when you can abuse ports and pathing on this ledge far above. Once that was taken care of, I pushed through some dredge guards to make it to the Destroyer of Worlds, which could be taken out while avoiding all the fiery fissures it created just by using range damage. 40 gold lost, no big deal. Now Citadel of Flame should not be soloable normally on any path, but I was led to believe it was, and while the rest of the dungeon was not a problem, there is an event in Path 2 where you need to collect several bombs within 2 minutes, and they're spread all over the place behind walls, on top of cliffs, and since I wasn't a mesmer or thief with portals, I was a vindicator. It wasn't really possible, so instead we duoed that part of the path, and then made it to the final boss where I just needed to kill 4 mobs, which make the eternal flame invulnerable. However, they respawn quickly and only one is enough to prevent me from damaging the boss. So naturally, I precasted my Spear of Archimorus to get the first kill and use my ports to quickly finish off the others, giving me the most time to damage the flame. But it was still another 40 gold lost. Next was Honor of the Waves Path 1. You all pick Spectre, so we've clearly got some thief mains in here. I wonder why, but Spectre is so incredibly high sustain, it's really hard to die. So other than the one time where I over pulled mobs into a boss, I didn't really struggle at all. You can just press your beam and win. And the final boss doesn't really do anything if you're at range. So I only lost 20 gold to that path. Crucible of Eternity is 100% not soloable on any path, so I went on to the ruined city of Ara. You all chose Reaper, which was quite fitting that I would be the master of the dead in the city of the dead. So I chose path 4 because it's the most epic path. This path is extremely long and you end up fighting risen avatars of the human gods, starting with Balthazar, then Melandru and Lyssa. Then there's a light puzzle which you have to complete by traveling across a large distance holding an orb that deals heavy damage to you every second, which I solved using the Executioner Axe novelty item, and supports from the Spectral Walk and Fleshworm. Then of course there's the Lupicus fight at the center of it all. This wasn't an issue except for the fact that I chose to use a minion build, which allows his AoE lifesteal attack to delay the fight much longer. Afterwards, doing the Grenth encounter, and then the dreaded Risen Avatar of Duena. The very first time I did this dungeon when the game came out, my guildies and I, we would go in and spend a few hours and we would come out without finishing the dungeon. Then we went in the next day and we still wouldn't finish it. That's because the Duena fight actually has many mechanics. There are Duena's tiers around the area which will help to remove the petrify effect that the boss targets players with, but as a solo player, you need to time your stability when the debuff is about to run out. If you get petrified in the pulsing damaging areas, you can easily die, and I definitely died trying to figure out the timing on the petrify, but that isn't it. The boss will also disappear at a certain point and regenerate health. The only way to get them to return is to either wait longer than you really should, or to lure 5 sparks into the holes around the statue. These sparks can aggro to minions, lose interest in you, and take unpredictable pathing. As one player, it can be simpler, but still a pain since you need to phase it before the boss regenerates enough health to bypass the 50% threshold. If you can CC the boss right before the 50% and then burst it hard, then get a good spark phase, you won't need to deal with them anymore. So I went as much burst as possible which makes it really risky when I have no sustain against the sparks. Got the CC, got the burst, then figured out it was faster to do 3 trips to retrieve sparks rather than 2, and Duena fell with ease. But I wasn't done yet. At this point there is a choice to go through a water tunnel with sharks, or I can pass through some Risen. There's actually an event in this area which no one does. This is one of the most savage events in the core game, 
They put the most annoying and dangerous enemies in packs, like the Illusionists and the Abominations, as well as Oozes. And you need to gather gears to repair a cannon, and then defend the cannon while the pact fixes it to shoot some legendary giants. You don't really see elite abominations or legendary giants anywhere else. They're either veteran abominations or champion giants. Then you travel through a petrified forest of coral to the palace, which looks like an evil version of the Divinity's Reach Royal Gardens. It's truly a beautiful scene, and the atmosphere is one of the things that, to me, makes Ara one of the best dungeons ever made in an RPG. But we're not done yet. The final boss has all of the previous boss's mechanics, and you can generally ignore them and just rush the Bloodstone Shard. After hours in Ara, I lost a total of 100 gold, but to be honest, it was worth it. But we didn't stop there. I lost about 300 to 400 gold, and I still had 700 gold left so I started to walk into the Fractal Portal. I was going to solo two Tier 4 Fractals, starting with the Urban Battleground. You all chose Vindicator, which is understandable because this is definitely one of the more fun builds to play. It has plenty of utility, CC, and mobility, but is still super aggressive and does tons of damage. I took out the first gate with ease, using a little subterfuge and using my range attacks from the Luxon Stance. I got lucky and the easy path was open so I immediately got to the main courtyard where there are hard to kill groups of mobs surrounding a bunch of siege that are non-stop firing on you. So you pull them behind the statue for line of sight and use range to take out the ballistas. Once the courtyard is clear, the boss comes out and while the first two phases of this boss are pretty easy, the last 25% he gets out a fiery greatsword which can easily one shot you. So I had to play extremely carefully, but I managed to one-shot the boss, only losing 40 gold from the siege sequence. Finally, I did the Aetherblade Fractal, and you chose the Untamed. It didn't start out well at all. I instantly died to a mine in the underwater cave entrance, then got farmed by the Aetherblade group at the start. But I eventually got used to the untamed again and spammed my abilities and chained my CCs to destroy everything in my path beyond that point. The puzzle was easy to do with the resistance from the untamed elite skill, so I can ignore CC and immobilize. The cannon sequence was rough, but the ability for untamed to cull mobs is just insane, and the more you land CCs, the more of your defensive cooldowns you get, so it has great sustain too. Now at the final boss, I have to be careful because there are small mobs that throw grenades at you and the boss will also shoot napalm. So I have to take my time and kite around and then go in while the pet's projectile blocking field is ready. Then the laser phase starts and I need to kill golems while using the boxes to jump over the laser. The golems become invulnerable when they get hit by the laser, but I get shocked by the laser. So I really need to manage my positioning and not get pulled by the golems. When I reach the final phase, there are two lasers, a large one that cannot be jumped over but is slow, and a small one that is fast but can be jumped over using the boxes. They become staggered, so avoiding them requires a lot of decision making, especially when trying to fight two golems, but I did manage to beat it, only giving up 60 gold. If you would like a chance to win a community chest, which contains a choice of outfits and other gem store tier items, then leave a comment on this video saying what kind of content you prefer to do. Is it large scale, small scale, PVP, PVE, roleplay, challenges, and leave your in-game account name to be eligible for the giveaway. As much as I like raids and strikes, I would rather more challenging solo or five-man content like dungeons where your actions and decisions as an individual are more impactful because to be honest, this challenge was a lot of fun to do, but for now, that's all. If you like this content, then give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to me for more, and if you want to support me further, you can become a patron. The link for that is in the description. Thanks for the support either way because any viewer helps, and I will see you all next time.